everybody. Hey, everyone. Justin, JC, as he's known. Welcome like, to Web to Summit. 20, I know. Like, it's, it's, I wasn't sure whether we were supposed to share this chair. Right, right well, let's stick to pink. We're going to talk about Movember for the next 20 minutes, and I'm sure lots of you know what Movember is, but for those of you who don't, many will recognize the iconic mustache as the symbol of Movember. So uh, we, we know Movember is a lot more than that. It, it, it basically does so much more, which we're going to talk about uh, over the next 20 minutes, but let's just talk about mustaches first to get that out of the way. How did the whole mustache thing come about? Yeah, well, it was, uh, it was back in 2003 now, so uh, a long time ago. And moustaches weren't cool, they weren't in fashion. And we thought, why don't we combine the moustache? There's nothing more manlier than rocking out a moustache for 30 days. It's a great challenge to talk about your upper lip. And we thought, let's combine that with men's health, because no one was really looking after men's health back in, back in the day, and breast cancer was doing such a great job. So we thought, why don't we combine that? And then we, we strapped our tagline, change the face of men's health. So you rock out the moustache. I've got a really crappy four-day moustache kicking in right now. <laughs> the beginnings uh, of one. And that starts the conversation. Hey, you know, we're looking after men's health. Prostate cancer is one of the biggest killer in men. Um, we look after suicide prevention. You know, 78% of suicides in the world are men. And we want them to have that conversation and have that change. So we found that the growing the moustache was an incredible catalyst for change um, because it was visual and it was kind of our badge and it was about real men growing real moustaches. And it kind of broke down that stigma. So the stigma of having fun for 30 days and then talking about real issues, we found worked really well. And yeah, we're 21 countries now and we're, we've been told we're the world's largest men's health organization, which is crazy. And it's, it's not us, it's the five million people behind us who are really changing the world. So 2003, this is when the growing of moustaches started to become more prevalent around the world. But how did it really take off? Because Movember has raised hundreds of millions of dollars. So there must have been a point which was a catalyst. Yeah, it was kind of, when I started Movember, I had a pager. And um, social media back then was me going, surfing, skating, hanging out at the pub, talking to my workmates. I remember the first Movember, we printed out A4 paper and stuck it up on, in cafes and poles, and it's like, you gotta get involved with Movember and hang out with our network. And the second year, 2004, when we really went for change and catalyst to change, um, we, we started our own little website, it was really clunky, and um, 450 people turned up, and we'd raised $54,000. We thought, that's cool, because that was our bit. We were just gonna give back. We weren't here to take over the world. We were here to give a little bit back. And This was before social media was really big. Way before social media. Literally, I was paging people in 2004 to come and join us. Um, so, at the same stage, you know, a guy named Mark Zuckerberg was starting Facebook uh, in, a, in a university the same year, and that kind of started the evolution. So the evolution of November kind of grew up with social, social media, which was interesting, because we had big decisions to say what we say no to, how that gets out there, and what it looks like. And thanks to social media, last year we created 1.7 billion conversations about November and men's health, and we just couldn't have done that on a beach. We couldn't have done that hanging out. So the catalyst point for us was probably 2005. We had 54,000 people. They all went and spoke about it. We raised 1.1 million that year. The government matched it for the first time, which is incredible for men's health. And then it just went nuts. You know, we, we, Adam and I flew around the world and set up, I think, eight countries in one year, um, off our own bat, off our own coin. Um, to help Movember get to where it was, because there's so many passionate people out there wanting to do it. So social media kind of made us grow up super fast. We had to get foundations in line. We had to get everything sorted super fast because it, it just scaled across the 21 different markets. But along that journey, we've had a lot of fun, and social media has definitely helped us get to where we are today. You know, over 485 million we've raised since we started, which is in incredible. Um, but it's more driving those conversations and it's more having that, that, that real stuff tick off and mm. we're going to talk about That's some case yeah. studies. We're going to hold that bit. But hold that. Um, social media by its nature is social. People love to get involved and like, feel like they're taking part in something, whether that's having a conversation or sharing an image. And so 
Movember, in many ways, was way ahead of its time, because when you think of some of the really big social media trends over the past two or three years, no makeup selfie being one of them, which was you know, raising money for cancer research, people taking a selfie and posting it online, this was happening years before that, and it's yeah. like a marketer's dream. <laughs> yeah, but it was for, you know, it's, it's, I think it worked and resonated really well because it was, um, we're not for profit, you know, it, it, it was for men's health and it was changing the world. And when you actually talk about the different stats of that, you know, men live six years less than women globally. And that's because we're, it's not genetic, we're inherently lazy, we we're inherently don't want to talk about our health, we present late, um, we don't want to break down and have that conversation. So for me, social media side of it and getting that rolling, it kind of combined it really well. And I think that's why you could say it was a marketer's dream because we had something real and significant to say. We were having real impact on men like straight away when they were doing what they were doing for November. But the catalyst was fun and social media was fun. And we're very creative lads and we like to push the pencil and we're, we're not charity boys. And you know, we were surfers and skaters and entrepreneurs and we decided to do, do some good and it kind of blew up on us and I'm, I'm, I'm on a stage right now and, and you I'm supposed to, to be running dinners <laughs> for like 10 people and giving some money back to health. And earlier in, in our chat, you just referred to Mark Zuckerberg as Mark, so you know, you're doing well. Um, let's talk about the, the type of innovation that Movember uh, has pioneered because we're talking about mustaches and social media and how you were raising awareness and raising money about for testicular cancer or prostate cancer, raising awareness about that. But it has grown, the, the, the movement of Movember has really grown, hasn't it? It's doing more things now, like so for example, physical activity, you're trying to get men involved in getting a bit more active. Yeah, and we knew that physical activity is one of the catalysts for change. And if I can get guys and everyone out there, if you can move 30 minutes a day for me, get off the bus, walk back into town, just move for 30 minutes briskly for three times a week for me, be good if you could do it every day. But you can offset cancer by 50%, heart disease, um, all sorts of things, uh, high blood cholesterol. It, the role on effect from just moving a little bit, then if you look at that piece for us, we thought, well, how are we gonna do this? And the first four letters of Movember are move. So we're challenging everyone to do, you know, 30 crazy moves in 30 days, make sure it's different. We've got Louise Hazel on board, who's an ex-Olympic uh, athlete who's done, I think she's done some twerking. <laughs> on, on moving. Um, we've got Daly Thompson, um, another great, you know, great athlete doing some crazy things. But it, and we've got, uh, what else we got? We've got a Speedo app so you can swim in the shape of a mo. So mm. we're kind of bringing the moustache back in. It's an app, you can download it and you can swim, swim into the shape in the of shape of a moustache. Yeah. And that's a good challenge and something that a lot of, you know, the swimming community get involved with. So for us, it's, it's segmenting down to our population of people and, and giving them what they want. So f change is about, for me, change is about knowing your audience and, and, you know, letting them have fun and create new ways for them to have fun, new ways to socially engage with us and new ways to disseminate the content so it's palatable for them um, and that it really humanizes the people we're, what we're working with. Let's talk about some of the new ways that you are actually uh, making content, sharing it, and uh, telling stories, some of those conversations and how they're being reflected. Because um, we were chatting about November earlier, and I was uh, really pleasantly surprised by all of the various things that you do. It's not just about growing a mustache. No, the mustache, again, the mo will always be king for us, but it's how, how we segue that into change. And, you know, um, We've made facial hair very, very popular these days. So it's not as, when we first started doing this, people just didn't grow moustaches and didn't have facial hair. And I remember having so many conversations with, you know, I sat with the editor of the Financial Times in London and he sat me down really seriously. And this was 2008, 2009. Look, my sales staff are about to grow mo's. It's not really relevant for the newspaper and facial hair isn't us. They're not gonna sell anything that month. And I was like, well, you can be the, you know, you can be the head head, head judge here, mole. make sure it's just the moustache, it's giving back to health and you'll probably sell more press. And to, ha to be having those stories and now it's just sort of part of life, people have moustaches and facial hair. So we, we like to change and do different stuff. So for us, 
it was like, well, how can we reconnect with our audience and make sure we're not just doing the massage thing and move as one of those things for 30, for, move for 30 days. We've created the In the Barber Chair series we're about to start to talk about. We've partnered with lots of different sporting, you know, sporting people around the world, like Swedish Hockey League, we're doing some amazing fun stuff with them. The GAA here with the 2,300 clubs, we're really making change. I got to go down to Croke Park and talk to them about the different things that we can do across the sport and the health and some incredible storytelling coming out of that from, from players who've had testicular cancer to sharing that with their audience. Um, with the rugby, we're doing a Move Like a Pro, so it's a 12-week program. You can go and move with your pros and move like a pro. That's around diet, exercise, and understanding your health. Because if I can get guys to understand what's going to take them out. So genetically, mm. if you've got prostate cancer in your family, you're two and a half times likely to get it. At 40, this is when you need to go and do this sort of stuff. So if we can, if we can get that information into a guy, and they know their historical data, they get moving for us, we, our goal is to just get guys to live that six years longer, average, to women, and that's gonna change health systems, it'll change economies, it, it'll change life. I mean, you're gonna have guys around longer. I'm not sure if girls want that, particularly in different relationships. <laughs> I'm sure they do. It's good to have guys hanging out longer. So um, for us, it's, it's building that new bit pieces of content in to, to, to fit with the audiences mm. that, that love and adore Movember. And it's reaching out to communities where the people are already there. So, you know, it's finding a relatable person or club or something that they can really identify with yeah, to we get built, that issue. We built the shoulder to shoulder conversation because women will talk one on one. Men will talk shoulder to shoulder because they don't like talking about their issues. Right, so sh shoulder to shoulder. So like shoulder to shoulder. Right, these like chairs are shoulder to shoulder, yeah, right. aren't they? Pretty cool. Actually, we could lean back on these. It's going to be more comfortable. Right, let's have a shoulder to shoulder conversation no, no, no. now about shoulder to shoulder. So, we should do it on the same thing. Okay, that's yes. That's a true shoulder Perfect. to shoulder conversation. Um, and I get to sit closer. <laughs> it's not creepy at all. Um, so, the shoulder to shoulder conversation is, and so many people have it. You'll go to the GAA, you'll go to the rugby, you'll be hanging out with your mates, you'll get through, you'll talk about what's going on in the field, you'll talk mm -hmm. about sport, the whole lot. And it's that breakdown of getting guys to do stuff. When they're shoulder to shoulder doing stuff, making stuff, seeing sport, hanging out, they will break down and have that conversation. And if they're having that conversation, especially like suicide, as I said before, 78% of suicides are men because they think the problems they have in life are way beyond everyone else's and no one's gonna agree with them. They start to break down with their friends and have these conversations and start to realize everyone around them has the same issues and the same problems. And hence why when we're going to talk about Movember Radio and in the Barber Chair series, this is normalizing. It, it's okay to feel like this. Mm, it's everyone okay. feels this at some point yeah. in their life. But guys, just, they'll just be sitting there staring and, you know, um, I've, got, I've, di I've just done a music project we'll talk about later and Bob... Bob sat there and you know, this guy's been through rehab and started rehab clinics and he was going through this heavy divorce. And he said when we were shooting this, uh, this music project in LA, he's like, I was with my mate the other day and we were sitting in a Knicks game, floor seats, cool seats. Um, but he, he was just there watching the game and it was another famous guy and it's like, Bob was about to go through this heavy divorce and it's like, dude, we got you, we got this, you know, don't let the divorce send you down a spiral, don't let it send you down this, this, this crazy journey that I know you can go down, just call us. So it's that friend set and that's community we want people to check back in with. In your 20s, you have this huge, huge relationship with your friends and you've got a whole big friend set. Guys hit their 30s, they hit jobs, long-term relationships, buying houses, careers, the whole lot. They hit their 40s, Some one of those things goes pear-shaped, they feel like, the world's you know, overcoming them, they can't pick the phone up and check in with their mates. So one of our big campaigns is check in before you check out. Go out to your mate. It shouldn't be a privilege to go to a sporting event. It shouldn't be a privilege to go in the pub. It's a part of your health and a part mm. of your life to go and have conversation with your friends. And it sounds cliched, but just even having that conversation really can completely change your mindset. It changes everything. I mean, I've seen so many stories about it, and that's why we're doing these different pieces of content we're about to see. Well, let's, we've been talking about that a lot. Let's, let's look at In the Barber Chair. Um, just explain to us what this is. So In the Barber Chair is a whole bunch of famous people and non-famous people who are Movember. You have to be part of Movember to get into it. 
Um, so we're looking here, we've got some actors, we've got Daly, we've got Charlie, who's a great you know, bike rider, we've got Mr. Motivator, who's still kicking around, we shot that. We've got Jack in studio, who's a musician, we've got rugby players, athletes and swimmers. And this is a series where we take photos in the barber chair. So uh, ice hockey, you're on the ice ring, we'll take it there. Um, as you can see, Jack's in studio because he's a musician. And then we have an honest, you know, fireside chat, we like to say, with them about why they're doing Movember, what the struggle is and go through. And we get that out through the social media because that's obviously where you're going to penetrate mass audience. And pe it normalizes the amount of comments we've got back from this going, mm. hey, I didn't know, you know, Charlie told me how to check for testicular cancer or I had no idea that, you know, the pressures the guys were under or this person's overcome this or this person, you know, suffers from mental health issues and this is how he overcame it. It kind of normalizes people to say it's okay, it breaks down that stigma to have that conversation. And it's such a simple but yet really powerful format, that image with, you know, a bit of text below it, interview, really reaches out in such a simple but effective way. But you're also doing interesting things in the world of audio. So, you know, podcasting uh, has become huge. Look at that, it worked. This is Movember Radio. This is Who Movember knew? Radio. Movember had a radio podcast. So Movember Radio is podcasts talking to guys. So Richie McCaw, uh, who just took the World Cup off me last weekend. Captain of New Zealand. <sighs> Captain of New Zealand. Um, talks about his journey with rugby. Talks about his highs, his lows, why he's getting into it. Tommy Carroll, who's next to him, talking about his, you know, he was seven times world champion, one of the best surfers on the planet. Talks about his struggle with depression even when he was up there, you know, his battle with drugs, how he overcame that and normalizing that process. We've got Claire Turnbull on there, who's, you know, who's just broke, had the massive breakthrough for us in testicular cancer, which in the next five years will probably kick testicular cancer because of her. So she's talking around the normalizing of that. We've got some survivors sitting in there. So this is getting your heroes or your different people in life, even your survivor and your ordinary guy, to have the conversation. And then you're kind of having that shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder conversation mm. online, in, in a car, ears. in your ears, hanging out. And it's resonated really well. So this is something you'll see us build on and, and really just bring to life and humanize you know, the five million people that are out there in Movember and how they're helping us change the world. Well, I listened to the Richie McCall uh, podcast last night and you know, what stood out for me was just how straight-laced and real it was. You know, it wasn't schmalsy, it wasn't sentimental. He was trying to articulate how he felt and it felt very real. And I think that is very appealing. It's awful how humble he is, isn't it? Yeah, he's, uh, you know, if, if he can feel that, then anybody can. Such a humble guy, one of the most humble guys. But yeah, it gets, does get that message out there and does normalize it. We have a clip that we want to share with you. Yep. So this is Mo Changes. This is our music project. So um, we're working with Whole World Band, which is here in Ireland, with Kevin Godley and the guys, who used to be 10cc. He's created this incredible app that you can actually go and shoot yourself in, I'll show in a sec into an actual rock video with famous rock stars. And that's your charity message and your song out there to your mates. So another piece of good content that sits online that can go out and you can actually connect with some of the most famous people in the world singing in your own rock song and get it out there. So I'm gonna play a quick clip because it explains it better than, than me. Hey, I'm Bob Forrest, and this is Flea's studio in Silver Lake, California. We recorded Changes by David Bowie for the Movember Mental Health Awareness campaign that's coming up on Whole World's Band. Waiting for, and my time was running wild. And you can add to it with your iPhone. You can play metal guitar, you can play folky guitar, you can get rid of my voice and sing yourself. So I turned myself to face me. But I've never caught a glimpse of how the Everybody who does that is going to contribute to men's mental health awareness. On a whole world band, you can do anything. So yeah, that was a, I mean, that was a lot of fun. I got to shoot in Flea Studio in LA um, with the Changes crew. Greg was there, who's uh, the CEO of Whole World Band, and getting that together. But it's really just another solid piece of content with some, you know, Jose is obviously pretty big dude at the moment, cracking through the scene, and to be able to sing with them and send that out. So we encourage everyone to go and download the whole World Band app that's here, 
go and create your own music and songs and send it out to the people to help us change the face of men's health and create change. So you are making it fun. Um, we have just run out of time, so we're going to have to end this shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder conversation. But it's been brilliant chatting to you today, JC. Yeah. Give it up for JC. Thanks, everyone.